All right, so hello everyone, and welcome to today's online workshop. Um, today's topic is how to validate content feedback for the WordPress training team. So um, the WordPress training team looks after the Learn WordPress website. Let me open that website up. So this is the Learn WordPress website. Um, and the Learn WordPress website is a educational resource uh, for both learners and teachers of WordPress. Um, so we have, for example, tutorials, tutorial videos, online courses, and um, online workshops like this session we're having right now uh, for learners. And then we also have lesson plans, which are teaching aids for teachers to go and teach WordPress. Now, I'm going to open one of these resources. Um, so I'm just going to open tutorials. Our most recent tutorial um, is about the WordPress 6.3 release. So that release came out yesterday, the day before. Um, all right. But anyway, so on each of these resource pages, if you scroll down a bit on the right, we have a, a section for learners or users to send us suggestions. So for example, if they find a typing mistake in the context, or if there's a grammar mistake, or even an outdated screenshot. So sometimes WordPress update and the screenshot needs replacing. When people find a piece of content needs an update, they can let us know from this button here. So I'll press let us know. And this takes users to the report content feedback page. Um, and this is what we're going to be talking about today. So the topic today is how to validate content feedback users send the training team content feedback and then there are two steps we first need to validate the feedback and then we apply the changes if necessary and the reason why we have to validate feedback um, is because sometimes the feedback people send us isn't about the content um, so sometimes they are experiencing a browser issue on their device or a network issue um, so sometimes it's not necessarily something we can fix. Um, and so that's why there's first a step to validate the feedback, see if it is an issue that is still occurring. And then once it's validated, then the editors in the team can edit the content. Um, so when people report content feedback, they come to this page. And if you look at the yellow box here, it says, if you're familiar with GitHub, then feel free to submit your feedback directly to our GitHub repository. So users can send their feedback directly into the training team GitHub repository if they're familiar with GitHub. Um, and then this automatically puts their feedback into our triage process. Um, but underneath the yellow box, you'll also see, if you're not sure what GitHub is, or you're not comfortable submitting an issue there, that's okay please fill out the form below and our team will be notified of your report. So if people aren't familiar with GitHub, that's totally fine. They can fill out this form here, <clears throat> which will send the training team a email. And then the training team have um, administrators who copy the content of that email and create a GitHub issue for that user. So all feedback lands in GitHub. Um, but depending on whether the user, user is familiar with GitHub, it might go directly there from the user, but it might go via an email. Um, so once the feedback lands in GitHub, we have a content feedback project board, um, which looks like this. And the project board has three columns and issues move from the left to the right. So the first column, awaiting validation. All the issues first land here. And you'll see we have 28 issues awaiting validation. And this is the column we'll be talking about in today's online workshop. Anybody um, can come to the training team's GitHub project board and validate um, feedback for the team. Once feedback has been validated, it's either closed out if it's not feedback or sometimes we get spam, um, who, people submit spam. Um, so things like that, people can close out. Um, but if it has been validated, it then moves into the awaiting fix column. So once it gets to this column, these changes need to be um, submitted to the learn.wordpress.org website. 
Um, and to protect the content on the loan website, um, edit access is limited to um, faculty editors in the training team. So anybody can, oops, anybody can validate content feedback. And once it moves to the awaiting fix column, it's then waiting for faculty editors to apply the updates to the content. And then once the updates have been applied, um, the issue moves to the done column. So that is an overview of how content feedback moves through the training team. Um, we'll step into the actual details of validating feedback in just a moment. Are there any questions so far about the overview here? Anyone can reject. Um, in a sense, yes. So anybody can um, look at an issue in the awaiting validation column and reject the issue. For example, it's not happening anymore. So it's something we don't even have to look at. Or maybe the user needs personal help. So you send help to the user and you can close the issue. Um, how is that rejection reason captured or no reason required? That is a good point, and it will come up in the steps I'm about to show. So every time we either close an issue or move an issue forward, that person must leave a note about why that issue was closed or moved. Um, and we'll, we'll see in a moment, um, the normal person is able to validate content feedback, but they don't actually have a close issue button. Um, so they can leave their feedback and say, this issue doesn't happen anymore, so um, we can close it out. But then they still need to wait for a faculty editor to actually press the close button for them. So it's sort of it's sort of a, a mechanism to make sure we don't have just any contributor come through and close all the issues out. Um, there's always a second person to double check um, to make sure issues are indeed um, worthy of being closed or worthy of being moved forward. But we'll get to those steps in just a moment. All right, so how do we validate content feedback? Now I'm going to drop a link here um, to the <clears throat> training team handle. Um, and so if you're um, interested in joining the training team and contributing to the training team, I highly recommend you bookmark this uh, link. Um, you see I've bookmarked it in my bookmark as well. Um, so I open the handbook quite frequently. And down the left here, you'll see we have a large list of um, table of contents. What we're going to be focusing on today um, is under the how-to guides, under how we use GitHub, there's a page titled Validating and Applying Content Feedback. So let me share this direct link in Zoom chat as well. There we go. Um, and so this handbook page will walk um, contributors through um, the steps of validating content feedback. That's what we're going to look at today and applying content feedback. So applying content feedback um, can only be performed by uh, faculty editors because they have the edit access on Learn WordPress. But validating can be done by anyone. <clears throat> All right, so let's jump into this. Validating content feedback issues. So, no special access is needed to validate reports. Anyone in the training team can do this. So if you're interested, um, please join us in validating feedback. Now, um, when you validate a report, you check to see if the report is relevant. Sometimes a fix may have already been applied to the content or the report was just banned. In these cases, the report is no longer relevant and can be closed. And then we list here five steps in order to validate content feedback. So there are just five steps here, and we'll go through each one um, together. So number one, open the list of content feedback awaiting validation. So we click on this list, and this will give us a list of content feedback, and you can see under status, they're all still awaiting validation. So we have 28 issues here. Um, so step one, done. Step two, open any issue and in a new comment, 
copy and paste the following checklist. So we have a grade area here. I'm going to copy that text and um, I'm going to switch over to this browser tab here um, to work on this. So let's see, page with incorrect content. Let's click on that. All right, so let's have a look at this issue. I'm going to open the issue. And what we're going to do is we're going to paste the checklist I copied from the handbook into a new comment down here. So you'll see it says feedback validation checklist. First point, if this is reporting an issue, can you, that's me, confirm reproduce the issue? So we type here whether we can or can't um, reproduce the issue. And then the second point is what should happen next to apply the feedback? So we leave a note here about what needs to happen next. For example, um, this issue is no longer relevant, so it, uh, the issue needs to be closed out. Or um, if we have validated the feedback, we can, for example, upload the screen, uh, the renewed screenshot into GitHub and say, please replace the screenshot in this content with this new one I created. Um, or we can say this paragraph needs to be changed this way, what have you. Um, so the validator can leave next steps to make the editor's job a bit easier. All right. So coming back to the handbook, step one was opening the list of content feedback. We did that. Step two was open any issue and copy paste the following checklist. We did that. So now step three, if the feedback is reporting an issue in the content, confirm if you can still see reproduce the issue. So this is where we actually now have a look at the issue and see if we can validate it. <clears throat> if you can reproduce the issue, type yes, next to the first item in the list, you just copy it across and move to step four. If you can't reproduce the issue, type no. If it looks like the issue has been fixed already, leave a comment with your findings and move to step five. And finally, if the feedback is unclear, leave a comment explaining what you tried and ask the author for more information. Um, you can do this by at mentioning the author in your comment. And then it says you can skip steps four and five below. All right, so let's see if we can validate or reproduce, sorry, reproduce the feedback that was provided here. So let's see, um, they've given us the content title, custom post types and capabilities. They've given us the URL, so let's open that up. So um, they've given us feedback about a tutorial here. And actually, let me share this GitHub issue link in the Zoom chat so um, other people can open the same issue with me. All right, let's have a look at their feedback. The page described above has mostly the same content as another page, developing with user roles and capabilities. I would expect this page to have completely different content since it is a different topic. All right, so let's open this page. Custom post types and capabilities. Developing with user roles and capabilities. And they're saying the content is pretty similar. The learning outcomes are identical. Comprehension questions. Which stores the default user roles and capabilities? What is the name of the method? Well, comprehension questions are different. The learning outcomes were the same. And then the transcript. The transcript is identical. At least this first section I'm seeing on screen here. All right, so it does look like maybe this person copied the transcript across. Hmm. Let's read the rest of the feedback. So the different elements are title, video, comprehension questions. The same elements are learning outcomes and everything from introduction down. 
Okay. Learning outcomes and anything from introduction down. So introduction down is the same. And um, all right, that is wrong. So what we need to figure out, so first of all, we have reproduced the issue. So if is, um, can we reproduce the issue? The answer is yes. We can confirm what this person is saying. Um, so then let's come back to the handbook. So if you if you can reproduce the issue, type yes and move to step four. So let's move to step four. Leave a note about what needs to happen next and press comment. For example, if a screenshot needs to be updated and you are able to create the correct screenshot, you can upload the image into your comment too. In this case, it's not a screenshot that needs updating, it's the actual content. So um, we can leave a bit of a note here about what needs to happen next, and then we'll press comment. So what I want to confirm is, is this the correct, con like the, the correct content for this video? Or is this content correct for this video? So I'm just going to play the first part of the video. All right. Let's see if the transcript matches that much. If it were how they can manage and how to some, you will learn how to add capabilities to an existing role. And also how to create a new user role. All right, so it looks like the, the captions and audio in this video match the content. So let me come over here and check the same with this video. So it talks about restricting access to custom post types. And we come down here. This is incorrect. All right. So we've confirmed developing with user roles is correct. And the custom post types and capabilities post is incorrect. So let's clarify that in the comments down here. So the content of uh, let's see the content of the page and video match for this tutorial. And then we'll leave a link to the one that does correct, that does match. All right. And then the content of the page and video do not match for this tutorial. And then let's look at what the user said once more. The different elements are these. So these don't need to be updated. The same elements are learning outcomes and everything from introduction down. So please update learning outcomes and everything from what did they write? Introduction down to match the video content. Please update learning outcomes and everything from introduction down to match the video content. And they also left a note here. Um, this article seems to have some typos and author notes cleaned up which probably should have been applied to the other article instead. Um, so there are probably notes and stuff in this one, which should be applied to this one. So let's also write that. Um, the feedback submitter noticed there are some typos.
typos and notes which were uh, tidied up on let's copy that link across which should have been applied to we'll copy that one back so summary one copy and apply the content from the custom post notes and capabilities to developing with user roles and capabilities. Copy and apply the content from this to this. And then step two, um, rewrite the learning outcomes and introduction on the custom post types to match the actual video. All right, so let's preview this before we submit it. Uh, feedback validation checker. So, we have been able to reproduce the issue and what should happen next so the content of the page and video match so let me let me let me say that a bit differently um the content of the page and, uh, does this make sense the content of the page and video match for this tutorial the content of the page The content and video on this tutorial match. The content and video on this tutorial do not match. That might be a bit easier to understand. Content video on this tutorial match. The content and video on this tutorial. Do not match. Please update learning outcomes and everything from introduction down to match the video content. The feedback submission notes if there are some typos and notes which are tidied up on this one, which should have been applied to this one. So the summary, copy and apply the content from custom post types to developer with user role, roles and capabilities. Um, and number two, rewrite the learning outcomes and introduction and all content from introduction down on this one to match the actual video. All right, so we've validated the feedback from the user and we've written out the next steps that have to happen. So we don't actually have edit access on Learn WordPress to fix this, um, but this will let the editors know what needs to happen next. So we press comment. All right. And that was step four of validating content feedback. And so then finally, we come to step five. <clears throat> if the feedback has been validated, and the next steps are clear, ping faculty editors in the training Slack channel, letting them know. They will be able to move the issue to the awaiting fix status, apply the necessary changes to the content or close the issue for you. All right, so we don't have access to change the status of the issue, but we can ping faculty editors who do have that access and they can make the edits for us. So to do this, we open the training team Slack channel. So let me bring my Slack window over into the screen here. Do that. Do that. All right, so this is the Slack channel. And you'll notice we are in the training team. And so it says, um, we have an example message you can copy and paste here. Hi, faculty editors. 
I have validated this content feedback, link to GitHub issue. Please move this to the awaiting fixed status and or apply the necessary changes, thanks. So let's just copy that across. <clears throat> um, so in the training channel, let me paste that message. Um, and actually this, this section here, what should happen is when you type faculty editors, it will go blue here. And you'll notice we have um, different people's names now pop up above faculty editors. This at mention, um, what it does is it pings all the faculty editors in the training team at once. So anybody who's um, logged in or has availability, they can pick up on this message and come and make the edits for you. <clears throat> so hi, faculty editors. I have validated this content feedback. Oh, let's, let's use the actual GitHub link. <clears throat> I'll copy that and over here. All right. My faculty editors, I validate this content feedback. Please move this to the awaiting fixed status and or apply the necessary changes. Thanks. So we can close this preview here and we press enter. Um, so you'll notice a GitHub preview pops up like this. We don't need that. Um, so you can close that off. And this has notified all the faculty editors in the training team. So they can now come and apply the fix we suggested. Um, and that is step five. So we just finished step five. Thanks for validating content feedback, GitHub issues. Um, so M, before you talked about rejecting feedback and can anybody reject feedback? So what would happen is if the feedback needs to be rejected um, inside the um, GitHub issue here, here it says, if this is reporting issue, can you confirm reproduced issue? You would type no. And then what should happen next? You would leave a brief comment under this. For example, I've checked the same page, um, but the issue doesn't happen anymore. Or it looks like the issue has been fixed already. Um, we can close this out. So you leave a comment like that um, and press comment like we did for this one. And you would still come to the training team channel and ping the faculty editors. So you would say, hi, faculty ed editors. I have validated this content feedback. Leave the GitHub link. Um, but the issue doesn't happen anymore. Can you please close the issue out for us? And so you let them know. And that just makes sure there's a second pair of eyes that checks the content for us. Um, and so yeah, the editor would come over here, they would look at the issue and they would go, okay, yeah, this one doesn't need to be open anymore and they will close the issue for you. And that's it. That is how anyone can validate content feedback for the training team. Any questions? Will the editor who rejected have to add a note to? Um, no. It, so they would just read your comment. And as long as they agree with whatever the validator has written, they will just press close issue um, and close that for you. They won't necessarily leave a comment. How do you search for a specific issue? So um, let's come back over here. <clears throat> So at the beginning of the <clears throat> check um, steps here, so it says open the list of content feedback awaiting validation. Um, this is the important link in the process. So when you click on that link, it opens the page of all the issues awaiting validation. And um, most of them have a bit of a, a, an explanation in the title here. So broken linking course, or not clear that a block theme is needed. Um, so this will give you a rough idea of what the feedback is about. You can choose any of these um, feedback, pieces of feedback, and validate them. Um, so really, we need all 28 of these pieces of feedback validated. Um, so you can choose any out of this list um, and work through the list for us. So if you don't know the title of the issue, Someone else created the issue, but didn't tell you 
the name of the issue or provided the link. So how do you search for that issue? Um, so are you talking about a validator or are you talking about the editor? When an editor comes and updates an issue, they, they do need the link. Um, so you'll notice I gave the link in the Slack message here. Um, so we really do need to share the link with each other. Um, but is that does that answer your question? You notice what we've been talking here. One of our editors has put done and they've been working on the issue. So that's good. Um, so assuming that you created an issue about a problem, I reported, but you never provided the link or the title of the issue. Um, hmm. I think that the easiest thing would be to contact whoever you reported the issue to and maybe just directly ask them and say, I gave this feedback. I don't see the 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 feedback in this list. Can you can you help me see um, and make sure my feedback was accepted? Um, I guess what you can do, um, just coming back to the main screen of content feedback here, you'll see 46 pieces of feedback have been um, completed. You'll see 13 have been triaged and are still awaiting a fix. Um, so what you could do is try searching here, I guess, and that will search all columns to see, and that might give you an idea of where your feedback has moved to. For example, let's see, broke, oops. If I type broken link, um, you'll know this, this has now filtered the issues. So we see there are six issues um, related to broken links. There's one issue still awaiting to be triaged, three that are waiting to be fixed, and two that have been fixed. Um, so this is probably the closest thing to the search feature um, you're looking for. So that is in the content feedback project board. Under content feedback, we have all the issues here. So you can filter issues out by keyword and hopefully find the one you're looking for there. Otherwise, um, thank good. you for joining. Tracy, were you saying something? <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. All right. Yeah, um, thank you for co-hosting. And um, yeah, I look forward to um, having you, M, and anybody watching this recording afterwards to join us in um, validating content feedback. So thank you for your time today. Thank you, Tracy. Please do. Thank you, M.